Hi, this is Julian for Pro Tools Expert, looking at folder tracks, specifically basic folder tracks in Pro Tools. Now, I've done a video looking at these in some detail, but in this one, I wanted to have a look at what you can do with them, some maybe more unusual uses for them. I've got quite a small session here, um, maybe perfectly manageable without folder tracks, but there's still some stuff you can use them for. Um, here, I've got the drums coming courtesy of UJAM Solid and I've set this up to feed all of the outputs to individual outputs rather than the master. So what I'm gonna do is that I've, well, I've already set it up, so it's feeding these individual outputs. Now this is the perfect opportunity to get into, uh, get into some uh, foldering because here, if I get all of these and I right click and I go uh, move to new folder, I'll call that solid one, because I might make another one. Um, now I can toggle their visibility like this, either clicking on that icon or Shift F, which is kind of handy stuff. And then I can set up the particular mix that I want. So I'm pretty dry, actually. I mean, not quite sure exactly what I want to do in here. But uh, yeah, that'll probably do. But I'd like to be able to play with some alternatives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use this right click duplicate command. Now, if I check all member tracks, I can get a duplicate of this folder. Now that's useful because I said I might come back to this and do something slightly different. So I'll call that solid two. And now I can use the, uh, the solo and mute logic. So uh, for example, if I solo this, I just get this one. So that's definitely what we're hearing there. And over here, I can just hear this one. However, they're both the same at the moment. I can introduce some changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the room up, bring the these down, uh, maybe make it a little less dry, change the kick snare balance. That'll probably do. So now I've got this. Oh, that is roomy oh, compared to this. Great. And I can swap between them because I've got this set up to uh, solo crossover in the options menu down here, solo mode. Uh, I always call it crossover. It's not. It's exclusive all. But anyway. But I'm only hearing the drums, which isn't super useful. Now, I mean, I could, instead of doing that, mute them. But then I hear nothing of the drums while I'm changing over. I haven't got the instantaneous crossover. So what I could do instead, actually there's a useful point in here. I'll just uh, solo this up. And if you have a listen, we've got this green indicator and then this orange one. What the orange one is, is it's a uh, MIDI activity light and the green is an audio activity light. So when we're seeing some MIDI happening from uh, this MIDI track here, we'll see a corresponding flash in the orange. Anyway, that's what that is. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll, I'll, I'll put both of these away. And then with the rest of this stuff, what I could maybe do is I could pop all of that into a folder as well. New folder. I'm not even going to name that. We'll just chuck that in there. And there we go. So now what I could do is I could solo safe this one, solo that one, and then I can listen to the whole track with that instantaneous crossover using this quite handy soloing logic that I've got. Now, actually, I don't want that just because I could extend this idea out to this and duplicate this, but I've got my master and my effects in there and I don't actually want them. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go move to top level. What that means is it'll move it out of the folder, as you can see there, and we can see down here. These are all members of folders. All of these tracks are members of folders because they're inset but these are not members of any folder at all. You can see that much more clearly, actually, if you come in here and you can see what's folded and what isn't in here because we have this uh, tree-like diagram showing us what's happening in the folder structure. So great, and then I could, if I wanted to, duplicate this one as well. Duplicate oh, one. I think that's going to end up being called folder one, duplicate one. It's getting slightly messy now, but the point is I could then introduce some other changes and get some alternative 
uh, plugins and stuff like that. I could absolutely do that. But rather more interesting, what I can do is we have got this overview. Now, if I put this away, put all of these away, uh, actually, we'll just do this with the one. We'll get rid of that. We don't actually need it. So I'll keep things nice and simple. But in here, this is where things get more interesting because I can do basic edits. So for example, from here, in that section there, when those toms are happening, if I were to just come in here maybe, and uh, I'll pop into grid so that things are actually happening exactly right, and just cut there, I can have a big mute for all of my other tracks apart from the drums. And all of those basic operations uh, happen. So if I wanted to, for example, get all of this and uh, copy it and paste it in later in the track, which wouldn't make any sense at all in this case, but I can. I can do those basic edit operations in this overview without having to drill in and do all of that complicated stuff, taking stuff in and out from the source tracks. So that's another thing that you can do with basic folder tracks without even getting into the routing stuff, which happens next time when we look at routing folders. Thank <laughs> you.